Hi all, welcome to the A-Level Law Essay channel. In this episode, I'll be covering a past year paper's question 6 from 9084-31, Paper 3, Law of Contract, October, November 2018. Please note that this video tutorial is a three-part series. This being part 2, I will be guiding you on the structure and content of the essay to answer the question. If you have not watched the video reviewing this question and its marking scheme, it is recommended that you do so before continuing with this video. You may click on the card above or the link in the description below this video to check out part 1 past year paper question review for this question. Before I begin, please subscribe to my channel for more video guides on essay writing and many other interesting topics. With that said, let's get started with part 2 content guide of video tutorial number 13. Question. The question reads, Elsa, Faith and Georgie are members of a dance band. They have just finished playing at a wedding when Elsa is approached by her uncle Harry, one of the guests, who asks if they would be prepared to play at his daughter's birthday party in August. The members of the band agree to play at the party. At the end of the birthday party in August, Elsa hands a bill for £450 to Harry. He expresses surprise and says he was not expecting to pay for the band. Three months later, despite repeated requests, Harry has still not paid the bill. Advise Harry and the band of their respective rights and obligations in this situation. 25 marks to answer a scenario-based wrong question, it is important to first identify the relevant parties and the issues that they are having with each other. From the scenario, we know that the disputing parties are Elsa, Faith and Georgie against Harry. Harry, who is Elsa's uncle, asked the band to play at his daughter's birthday party in August, in which the band agreed. Upon completing the gig, the band hands Harry a bill that is due to them to which Harry was not expecting. Three months have passed and Harry has not paid the bill. Now, we are to advise both Harry and the band as to the legality of the bill that is due. After identifying these important things, we should then be able to figure out which chapter in the contract law syllabus this question is covering. By the looks of some of the key points in the scenario, it is safe to say that it covers the chapter for nature of contract and that it focuses on the topic intention to create legal relation and consideration as we have to determine if there even was a valid contract that was formed during the transaction between Harry and the band. Introduction To introduce an essay on contract, we should definitely start off by giving a brief definition on contract so as to set the flow of the content in the right direction. Here, we can briefly define it as a legally binding agreement between two or more persons in a contractual relationship in which parties owe each other mutually agreed obligations. Because the scenario in the question concerns the formation of contract, we should also mention the main requirements for the formation of a contract, i.e. offer and acceptance. Of course, it would also be good if we can tease a more specific topic that we are going to be discussing and this being the topic on intention to create legal relation and consideration. The next thing we should do is to briefly highlight the characters and contractual issues faced by the parties in the scenario. The thesis statement should explain that before we can determine if there exists a contractual relationship, we need to consider if a valid contract was formed between either one of the supposed contracting parties. Point 1. Formation of Contract In any contract question, we usually have to first discuss the formation of contracts so that we can determine the existence of a valid contract. A contract is usually formed when one person makes a contractual offer to another and the offerer should state clearly what is being offered. And their contractual offer should also be clearly and unequivocally be accepted by the offeree for there to be a valid contract. However, because this question is silent on a matter relating to any actual contractual offer and acceptance, meaning that we only know that Harry asked the band to play in her daughter's birthday party and the band agreed to it, we cannot really assume that this transaction equates to a legally binding agreement. Moreover, the issue regarding payment was not even highlighted until after the completion of the gig, and that it apparently 
didn't even cross Harry's mind that he was supposed to pay the band for a service. Therefore, at this point, we should only briefly define contractual offer and acceptance and then highlight the biggest issue with the transaction, meaning that we do not know if there is any actual offer and acceptance that took place and move on to discuss the real issue with regards to the formation of contract, that is, the intention to create legal relation. Point 2. Intention to create legal relation Briefly explain that the intention to create legal relation is an important element that is required for the formation of a valid contract between two or more contracting parties. This is because if people make an agreement without any intention of being legally bound by it, that agreement will not be regarded by the courts as a legally binding contract. Common law dictates that in order to determine intention to create legal relation, the courts will assess the party's intentions objectively meaning to say that the outward behavior or words used by the parties must suggest that they intended to be bound by an agreement notwithstanding any secretly held reservations. As per common law, whether there is intention or not can be summed up by looking at two different types of agreements, i.e. domestic social agreements or commercial agreements. The former suggests there being no intention. Case example, Balfour vs. Balfour 1919, and the latter suggests there being intention to create legal relation. Case example, Esso Petroleum Limited vs. Customs and Excise Commissioners 1976. We should then explain in depth with relevant case law on how domestic social agreements work, i.e. that it is usually between spouses, siblings, or close friends and that by default, it is presumed that any agreement between these people is not considered to be done with intention to create legal relation. After that, we should also explain in depth with relevant case law on how commercial agreements work, i.e. that it is usually between business people or people with business in mind when they deal with each other and that by default, it is presumed that any agreement between these people is considered to be done with intention to create legal relation. Applying this discussion into this scenario, we now have to determine if the transaction is considered to be either a social one or a commercial one. Since the question asks us to advise both parties, we are free to cite either one of them. However, for an essay with critical depth and content, candidates attempting this question should briefly consider both strains of argument meaning that in what situation can it be considered social and in what situation can it be considered commercial. This is now completely up to the wit and whims of the candidate when attempting to write the essay answering the question. Point 3. Consideration Either way we conclude the previous point, we will still have to address the issue of consideration. Otherwise, the essay will be incomplete as it lacks depth and critical discussion. We have to remember that law exam questions are not always as simple as they seem, and we are required to view the scenario more objectively and think out of the box when attempting to answer it. As before, briefly explain consideration as an important element required to form a valid contract and describe it as something which represents either some benefit to the person making a promise or some detriment to the person to whom the promise is made or both. The most basic case that we can use to illustrate how the element of consideration works is Dunlop vs. Selfridge, 1915. There are many characteristics which associates with the element of consideration, but the one that we should emphasize here is with regards to the notion that consideration must not be passed, meaning that we cannot use something that has already been done or given as consideration in exchange for fresh or new consideration. This characteristic of the element of consideration is relevant and should be highlighted as the scenario emphasized the fact that the bill due was only given after the completion of the band's gig and that Harry never thought of paying the band for their service in the first place. In a way, we can say that the deed was done even before an agreement for payment was made and so therefore the deed of performing the gig is considered as past consideration. A good case to illustrate this situation would be Re McArdle 1951. To go even further into the discussion, we should also consider the situation in the case of Lumpley vs. Brahway, 1615, 
where past consideration, i.e. performance of the gig, was actually provided at the promisor Harry's request, and it was understood that payment would be made in return for the performance of the gig. Whether this argument worked in favour for either parties will really depend on the common practice in a situation such as this, i.e. asking young people in music bands to perform in birthday parties and whether or not due payment is understood for the performance. Again, because the question asks us to advise both parties, it doesn't really matter where our answer stands so long as we address the possible legal issue that may arise from the scenario with backing of legal principles. Conclusion Based on everything that has been discussed, we should now briefly point out some of the more salient points to determine whether there is a contract or not. Here, we can conclude either way as long as our discussion is compelling enough and that it leans to support either parties. Review Let's have a quick review on the content guide. In the introduction, we briefly define contract law, the requirements to form a contract, and highlighted the facts and issue of the scenario before we moved on to the thesis statement stating our objective for the whole essay. In point 1, we develop our essay by establishing the requirements for the formation of contracts and applied it to the scenario and concluded that we cannot properly determine if there is any offer and acceptance going on and the issue is more on the intention between both parties to create legal relation. In point 2, we endeavoured to define and discuss the element of intention to create legal relation and determine that the situation can fall under either domestic social agreements or commercial agreements. In point 3, we define and discuss consideration and its characteristic of being something which cannot be passed as well as the possibility of a situation where due payment was understood between the parties. We concluded it by summing up our discussion and highlighting some of the more important points in the whole content of the answer and end the essay by stating that the conclusion can support either parties. Before I end this video, I would just like to let you know that I offer private tutoring classes to anyone who needs personal guidance in their studies. So, if you're looking to be personally coached by me or be in a micro class with me, please do email me with the address in the description below. This is the end of the content guide for the video tutorial. If you have any questions or opinion on my approach to answering the question, please do comment below. Do check out part 3 of this video tutorial where I will go through with you a sample essay on this question. I will put a link to it in the description below. If you find this video tutorial useful, please like, share and subscribe to my channel for more. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time.